Okay, so hi everyone, back for another instalment, um, another presentation about our Spectrum for Rail service. This is part two, it's going to be a little bit longer than the last one because we're going to a bit more details about how the service works, how the science works, um, that type of thing, but still on the topic of vegetation and ground stability for rail. So yes, the, um, the Spectrum service, so everything that I showed you last time about you know how we uh, provide the charts of ground movement that type of thing I'm going to explain a little bit more about how you know we run that with customers and also how um, how you know the science works actually so hopefully it should be uh, interesting so if for the service you know we have to define the locations and the time scale that's quite important you know what's the the time scale that's um, that's going to be useful for the client some areas of the world not so many deciduous trees but you know in temperate latitudes um, that's an important consideration so we want to make sure that we have a, a well-defined location and also that we know when we're going to be getting the data for that um, then what we do is we source and prepare the data. So got a variety of different data sources, you know, so all, all the big names in satellite uh, imagery, also some lower cost sources as well um, here and there. And then what we do is we we prepare the data. So we get it, we quality control it, we you know do a, do a whole bunch of things to to make sure that the outputs are as accurate as possible. Um, then we run analytics. So you know, a combination of uh, sort of uh, mathematical analysis and AI, um, and then we deliver it into the into the Spectrum portal. So let me just talk you through those steps now. So, yeah, defining the location. You know, there's a few ins and outs here, but it's pretty straightforward, really. Normally, you know, a lot of organisations they've got uh, KML shape files, that type of thing that they can provide us, really nicely defined, uh, you know, routes of the railway lines. Um, so what we'll do is we'll we'll take that and we will then just confirm it's okay for the for the ground movement detection and vegetation survey. Um, not everyone has that. Some people have you know uh, route maps, but they don't have the precise locations. They don't follow the exact line of the uh, the track. Um, and other people might not even have that. They might just have you know the stations, for example. Um, so you know, but if necessary, you know we can just trace the route for you so we can get the imagery we can define the route really really accurately to to make sure that the outputs are perfect you know it takes a bit more time but um but but you know it makes sense so so yeah these here are a few examples of some of uh, some of the projects we've been working on um, and then what we do is that we run um an automated download of the of the radar data so uh, with SatSense. so there we're getting you know the radar data over time so it's every couple of days it comes through because it's the time series we're really thinking about there for the ground movement so each one of these is uh, that you can see through this little animation here is another radar uh, image um, and the persistent scatterers you know the brightest points on here generally uh, the ones which we use to to measure the ground movement um, and I'll tell you a bit more about how you know what a persistent scatterer is. Um, then with the optical data, we get um, we get that we make sure that you know it nicely lines up to the map. Um, that you know there's no issues because of you know elevation causing uh, you know distortion in the terrain, anything like that. Uh, we you know check it for clouds, um, and uh, and then yeah we prepare it for the for the, for the AI process. So. So the AI process, the first um, part of it is uh, for the optical imagery where we have trained, you know, tens of thousands of images uh, to, we've trained a computer, sorry, with tens of thousands of images that we've labeled. So uh, there, you know, the computer effectively has been taught how to see, to tell the differences between, you know, the uh, trees, the uh, fields, the roads, the buildings, that type of thing. Uh, you know, this is stuff that, to do manually is highly laborious and we just don't have the patience for it as a uh, as human beings and we don't actually have the accuracy so you know um the computer is is far better at doing this than we are um and so yeah we can run that over images and we run it over huge amounts of images really quickly which makes it cost effective um and then so then with the radar data with this you know just a very brief explanation uh the radar you know when it when it travels down to earth and back we get information about the phase 
um, of, of the radiation. Next time it passes over, if that phase changes a bit, then it means that the target is effectively that bit further away. And so it's this additional sort of distance of travel, which means that uh, which means that we can pick up those really, really tiny changes in the, the terrain height. And so persistent scatterers generally are going to be, you know, your uh, man-made features or bear ground, things like that. Uh, so, yeah, metal objects, you know, buildings, that type of thing. And for every single one of these points, you know, of the persistent scatterers, we then get, you know, a time series of the ground movement. So this is uh, this is uh, where that data comes from. Then it's about geoprocessing. So we've got all of that imagery. Um, we've got all the uh, done the analytics. We've extracted the um, basically the locations of all the trees, uh, the yeah, the movement of all those ground uh, points. Well, so what we now need to do is we now need to define the risk zones and we have some standards that we use uh, but often customers have you know what they'd like to achieve um, i've used this uh, example here because it's a particularly um, uh, difficult location where as you can see you know there are trees overhanging the the line not only the line but the trains itself you know not only the ballast but also the the uh the track um and we've added on there you know uh, uh, I think it's about a three meter boundary a six meter boundary each side which then you can see immediately you know using the segmentation which of the the trees are uh, going to need uh, to be dealt with um, so yeah we can also create statistics on that so the locations you know the amount of trees that are going to have to be done so you can understand how much work there's going to be you know use that to estimate how long the uh, line needs to be closed for that type of um, uh, that type of maintenance and then we also filter the 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 inside measurements so the ground movement measurements we also filter those just to make sure that we're getting the ones that are within the uh, boundary of the line then we get the data deliver it to the portal. So I showed you the portal last time, um, so I won't go through that again, but I will just, you know, very briefly show it's just a static image this, but of the uh, of the track, the ground movements, the vegetation change, you know, uh, all, all displayed in there, can all then be streamed directly to the mobile if whoever's going to be working on the project. So secure access there, you know, works on desktop or mobile, you can annotate it, but, you know, collaborate with the team. Um, and I suppose, you know, crucially, it's always on. Once it's delivered, it's just there in our mapping portal. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, a bit more details for you there. The next video is going to be about the, uh, you know, how we run the projects and a bit more uh, on the commercials. So hopefully that should be useful if you're thinking about budgets, that type of thing. Um, so keep an eye out for that on the EarthEye channel. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, by all means, get in touch. Uh, get in touch with us at EarthEye uh, if you'd like to find out a little bit more. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.